So now we've gathered our data from whichever method we've used, uh, and we need to then create from our measured points uh, a continuous surface. So this requires interpolation and extrapolation. So interpolation being uh, creating uh, new data, as it were, interpolated data between points. Extrapolation means going beyond our data, outside of the measured area, which we try to avoid as much as possible. Um, we, you know, we can reasonably safely assume perhaps out some small distance from the measured data, uh, but it's in almost all cases best not to. Uh, rather interpolate than rely on extrapolate. Uh, there are uh, many methods available to us. Um, they all have their, their, their advantages and disadvantages. Um, and we, we'll go through these now and look at them and see approximately how they work and what their advantages and disadvantages may be. So we we'll, we'll look at inverse distance weighting, which is an old favorite, still very commonly used. Uh, and is perhaps um, with it, with, a, an, with a, a, an adequate data density uh, probably one of the best methods to use simply because it's easier to reproduce the method and work our way backwards to find out where things have come from. And then we have Krieging, which uh, is very popular uh, amongst some practitioners and produces nice looking results. Uh, and as long as our data are good enough, it's good enough, and, it, and, and perhaps this actually is, is the best method under the right circumstances. The circumstances have to be correct, though, for Krieging to, to work. We have things like minimum curvature, nearest neighbor as well, is another method. Um, generally speaking, not, not applied to, to elevation models, uh, simply because you'll end up with a sort of blocky stepwise uh, surface. And then we have triangulation usually with a linear interpolation between the, uh, the points. We'll look at these now in more, in more detail. Uh, but all of these do rely on Tobler's first law of geography, which is a fairly, uh, uh, fairly obvious statement that uh, everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. Which sounds simple, and why should this guy become so famous uh, within geography for making such an obvious statement? Well, it wasn't just that statement, there's a lot of mathematics behind this as well, uh, which he, he, he worked with. Um, so you, it's not just a matter of coming up with something fancy to say, you also need to back it up with some Greek letters. Um, so let's just uh, um, have a quick look then at some of these methods. Uh, you probably have heard of inverse distance weighting before, uh, and it says here that it's an exact interpolator. Uh, many of these methods are going to be exact interpolators. What that means is that the original data points that we, we sur survey and leave in our data model, uh, our elevation model, are preserved. The value that we recorded there is maintained. It doesn't change when we do the interpolation. It doesn't change anything. This is true uh, until we rasterize our data. And because of um, our raster cells, the information being stored at the either at the center or the corner of a cell, whereas the information may be derived from any point within that cell, it will be moved slightly. So it's it, it then uh, is no longer an exact interpolator. The, the exact value may be maintained within that cell area, but its location is slightly off, uh, potentially, or almost always slightly off. So that's something to consider, so even though the method itself, inverse distance weighting, is an exact interpolator, once we start looking at rasters, that becomes less clear. So um, let's look through this example. We are here, want to, want to uh, interpolate a new value uh, here at this point, and we have data uh, gathered at various points, and we set out a, a, a radius from this point saying, I want, I'm interested in, in information no farther away than this distance. These points I'm saying are probably not relevant for me. They're probably too far away to inform my decision. And if I just take an average value, take those and average them out, I end up with, in, in this case, 12.5. Uh, so I sum those up, divide by four, and the value I get is 12.5. That's a very naive, that's not inverse distance weighting, that's just a naive, unweighted uh, method of calculating the, the, a value there. So if we want to then instead use 
distance to inform us. You know, the closer something is to the point we're interested in, the more it should influence the outcome. We can use the distance, the inverse of the distance, to create the weight. So the distance to all of these points, uh, we can see that the distance is uh, shortest to, to, to this one here. From there to there is our shortest distance. One divided by that distance gives us the inverse of that. So we uh, calculate the inverse distance, in this case, in this very simple case, uh, to all of the points that we're interested in, sum them up, normalize the values so that we end up with normalized weights, so that they, they sum to one, and then use that normalized weight, multiply it with the, uh, the original value that we're looking at, so this would be that value there, and then that value there, and so on, and then uh, sum that up, and we get a new value. And so our new value there, rather than being 12.5, is 12.17. Uh, using this uh, very simple, just the distance, the inverse of the distance. Typically, uh, we square the distance. Uh, so rather than just being uh, the, the inverse of the distance, we, we square the distance and take the inverse of the squared. That should actually be a squared distance there. <clears throat> Uh, but it, it, it's the same idea, we've taken the distance, we take the uh, square that, take its inverse, sum those up, normalize uh, to, correct, to calculate the weights, multiply the weight with each uh, um, elevation from, a, from the point we're in, interested in, sum those up, and we get a new elevation. And this time it's, uh, it's changed, it's 11.85, and perhaps that feels even closer to what we imagine it should be somehow the, the nearest data is stronger than the, the, the farther data. Um, it, this, this squaring weakens the effect of the more distant data points, so that this has a strong influence over the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the result. Yeah, even stronger than just norm, than, the, than the, the, the regular uh, distance inverted. Um, this will give us a result that looks a little odd at times, uh, um, because we the with the the the, the, the values that we interpolate um, being more um, strongly influenced by information close to us or close to the point we're trying to work with, we can end up with this sort of pits and peaks appearance, um, and everything else tends towards an average value, so that the general area, general surface is is going towards an towards a, a average. Now this might not be, this may not be the average of the whole area, it may be a reasonably local average depending on how far we're looking when we're, when we're performing our calculations, the radius of this that red circle we had in the previous images. Uh, but we we still get this um, tendency towards a, a, an average and then peaks and pits around where we have the data points. Um, so if we look at a profile here we can see that it's you know there, there is a general trend and then it will go upwards, but there are these, these localized uh, troughs and, and, and peaks here, the pits and peaks as we go across our profile here. But we have captured the general idea of, of, of the, the topography has been captured here, but we do have this, this issue with the, with, with the exaggerations that, that localized.